Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I want to talk about how and where to sell your artwork online right away. So you can, I'm going to kind of give you a complete guide on how you can start selling art. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's photographs or digital art, um, actual paintings, sculptures, whatever. I'm going to give you kind of a whole uh, blueprint on how you can sell your artwork. And I'm going to give you both places where you can list your artwork and kind of how to get started with that. Only this will really just be like a high level overview of how to do that. Um, not going to go like into necessarily nitty gritty details, but I will give you some places to kind of list the work. And then I will also list some ways that you could get trafficked uh, to those places. So traffic is just, you know, visitors. So I'm going to give you some ideas on how to get visitors to those listings uh, so that you can, you know, hopefully start getting that artwork out of there and start seeing results. Now, a couple of things, uh, a couple quick notes before we get started. First off, the methods that I'm going to share with you, um, you know, it's not guaranteed that you're going to get sales. It's also not guaranteed that you'll get sales right away. So you have to kind of think of this as if you're trying to sell artwork and you really want to do it like full time, you have to really take this as a as a business and really start investing time and maybe a little bit of money into it to get it started. Um, I actually just sell paintings as a hobby. I don't do it as a business. Um, I have a full time job and some other things that I do. So all of the things I, I'm going to share with you, I've done most of them. And I do it, but I don't do it full time, so I don't, you know, I don't make my full living off of selling art. So, just wanted to kind of throw that up up front. Uh, also, it's really late at night, so I'm not going to be very loud. Um, I will try to fix the audio later on, but if there's a lot of background noise because I'm recording kind of in the middle of the night um, and everybody else is sleeping, so I don't want to be too loud. Um, and then lastly, just some of the stuff that I share with you is stuff that, you know, you can implement right away. Some of it you kind of have to put a little bit of uh, effort into, but all of it can be worth it if you're trying to, again, sell art full time. So, you know, I just want to wanted to share all that. And, you know, it's 2020. Uh, all of this stuff could change later this year, could change, you know, next year, whatever. Uh that's just kind of how the nature, that's the nature of the internet. But, um, you know, maybe I should put that in here, you know, 20, 2020, just so people know that this is currently um, what's working. So I'm not going to go over too many different pieces of how to do this. I'm simply going to share some of the best, uh, most focused ways to do it. And the biggest thing that I'm going to share with you is that is, is to just kind of pick one way and really run with it. Uh, there's a lot of different ways you could go. There's a lot of things that I'm not going to list here uh, that I used to use that I just found have not really been that effective. So I'm really not going to uh, share everything, right? Just ways that you can kind of get started uh, for free and right away. So things you can literally start implementing today, tomorrow, you know, in the next week, whatever. So that's pretty much it. Um, this will probably be a longer video, so I just want to give that heads up, maybe half hour or more. Um, I, it probably will have a few ad breaks just because that's kind of how these longer videos go. So just, again, kind of giving you a heads up. All right, I know. Now you're probably waiting for the actual content, so let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so let's talk about where to, to list your work. And so we're going to start kind of there. And I'm going to give you a few uh, examples of things that I've done that you can do, again, that you can just kind of get started right away. Um, the first and kind of easiest way to, you know, really get started, especially if you have never actually sold anything online or if you just want a way that's, uh, that's free, um, we're going to kind of go over that. So the first way to do this, to kind of get your artwork out there, just, just the basic, most easiest way to do this, um, is simply to start taking pictures of your work and putting it on Instagram and putting that artwork out there just so that, you know, people can see the artwork. And even if you don't have a website, uh, you could kind of just tell them to, 
message you and then you could, you know, sell that artwork. Um, so I'm going to give you an example. This guy, uh, Thomas Awar, one of my favorite artists, a phenomenal artist. His artwork is very vibrant, uh, very cool looking abstract artist. Um, I think he's in Germany or something. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but the guy is, you know, great artist. And this is kind of what he does. Um, so I'm going to show you an example of one of his posts on Instagram. And, you know, he just kind of says what the size is and literally doesn't, say the price doesn't say you know anything about else about the painting he literally just puts the size and uh the availability and the price and that's it that's literally all he does and i know a lot of artists who actually do this you know dm for pricing they don't put the prices on the uh the pictures themselves and they don't um you know they don't list that on there and actually i'm gonna go ahead and pull up another tool give me one second because i just remembered this and we'll go over all this stuff let's see wall what's uh, it this one there we go okay we're gonna come back to that so i apologize but anyway all right so again this is probably the easiest way you could get started right now start taking pictures of your work uh, edit those photos to look good and then start posting them on Instagram um, and you know you could just put the size maybe you could you can put the price if you'd like you know your availability like if it's sold if it's a you know if it's still around whatever this is just a really easy way to kind of get started and so what you would do uh, for that is say this was your artwork and you were selling it um, all you'd literally have to do is, uh, you know, set a price for it. And you'd probably want to be consistent based on the size of the paintings. So, you know, or, or your artwork, whatever it is. Maybe it's a song. Um, maybe it's images that you're selling, limited prints of, whatever it is, right? So you, you take a picture of it. And then you basically just use PayPal. And that's why I opened a PayPal here. Because with PayPal, you can set up free, um, you know, item links like you can set up a free link for your item uh, based on whatever the price is of the item so you just go in you create a link um, for that price and what the item is and then you just send that to the person and then they buy it through paypal and then once you have the payment you can you know send the artwork to them so that's literally probably the easiest way you could get started right now because you don't even have to have a website to do this. You literally just can kind of make up the links as you go. So it's it's like you're saving yourself a lot of effort on the front end because you can just kind of start getting the work out there. And then when people start asking about it, then you can send them a link, you know, a PayPal link. So that's probably the hands down easiest, fastest way to start getting um, people to see your artwork because of that. Because you could just tell them to message you um if they're interested, that way you know that they're interested because, you know, you could put a price on something and if, you know, if nobody likes the price, then they'll never buy. But if they're interested, at least you have them, um, you know, you have that person kind of looking at that artwork and then you can send them the link. So that is the, the easiest, hands down, fastest way to start getting started, start getting started, to, to get started. So start posting pictures on Instagram. And then just telling people to message you for it or even putting the price if you want and then just creating the PayPal links for those items as you go. So that's a, a really easy way to get started. Uh, next, let's talk about, um, we're going to talk about listing sites. So I have two kind of main ones here. Um, the first is Saatchi Art. And I talked about, I talk about them a lot in my other videos. Um, I use Saatchi Art. This is a, this is a picture of a listing um, on Saatchi Art. So this is something that I do have listed currently. Um, the thing with Saatchi Art is that it's free to get started and there's no, uh, there's no application. So there are some sites similar to Saatchi Art that I've talked about in other videos, uh, like Art Finder, um, and Satista and stuff like that. And those sites are, are very similar to such art. You, you list it into an online gallery. And, but the thing is that you have to be accepted. I get to submit an application, and then out of all these applications I get, they choose uh, which artists they accept. Such art doesn't do that, um, at least not right now. So 
you just literally create an account and start listing. So that's why I've posted it here because it's so easy to get started with. Um, basically, the way that such art works is it's an online gallery. So if we just go to kind of the home page, uh, you can see that they have all kinds of different works. And the thing with Satya is that they take digital works, they take photographs, like uh, sculptures, any of that stuff. They they allow all of that stuff. So, um, you know, it's a it's a great place to get started if you're especially new to kind of selling artwork. And so the way that it works is that you list your item and they take a third of whatever your commission is. So say you list it for $300, they take about a third of that so you get about 200 out of that um but you still and you still have to pay like if it's a physical item you still have to pay to get it you know wrapped and all of that stuff but uh they pay for the shipping so it's like it's that that third that they take actually does cover uh the shipping of the item so you definitely want to price accordingly but what's nice about Saatchi R also is that um, when you, if someone favors you, so, uh, if I can go back to myself. Okay. So I want to show you something that is pretty cool. What I like about Sachi art is that, uh, if someone favorites your work, um, or they like, they become like a follower like this, that, that does, that's what I meant. I apologize. Um, if someone becomes a follower on Sachi art, when you post new works on Sachi art, they actually get a notification, they get an email. And it's not something you have to do. Um, it's just something that Such Art does automatically. So that's kind of nice. So if, if you can get people to follow you on Such Art, um, anytime you post new works, they automatically get an email about it. So that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, I like Such Art. I've, I've seen some people not like it. I've never had a bad experience with it. Like, it's been good so far. Uh, it does take a little while to get paid. So I always kind of tell people that, uh, but as far as it goes, like listing and getting two thirds of that, you know, that price, you know, it does make your price, your, your work a little more expensive because you have to kind of consider that they're going to take that third. However, at the same time, it raises the value of your work because you're listing it higher. So it's, it's not all bad. Um, but the biggest thing with such art is that it's going to attract people with money as opposed to just any other person. Although, again, depends on how you price your works and how you plan on setting them, stuff like that. So, um, But that's such your art. Like I said, there's a couple of other, uh, like Art Finder and Zatista. And, you know, they're great. And if you can get approved, then they're all they're pretty much the same thing as such art. But if you want to just get started right away and you want to look kind of professional because you're in an online gallery, uh, such art is probably the place to start. Now... The other listing site that I want to mention is Etsy because so many people use Etsy. I have not really had good experience, not not a bad experience per se with Etsy, but um, I've never really I've never sold anything on it. So for me personally, I haven't done well with Etsy, uh, but I also didn't put in a like full full effort. So. Yeah, I listed my items on Etsy, and then they just, you know, I listed a few times, uh, like a dozen items, and none of them sold. So I just kind of never used it again. There are some people who just love Etsy, and they use it all the time, and, you know, they, they swear by it. Uh, for me personally, I am not a fan. The And here's why. The thing that I see that a lot of people want on Etsy is these kind of smaller items, um that they can buy that are like $200 or less, right? So smaller, you know, just kind of niche items. Um, not, that's not to say that they you can't sell prints or photos or art or anything like that. You, you can. However, the biggest thing that I see is like, unless you sell something kind of unique or cute, um, they just, they don't do as well on Etsy, at least just from what I've seen, just kind of, watching the items that um, that do really well. I mean, just looking at this, it's like this is all kind of either super unique, um, number one. Number two, it's it's like cutesy, right? Or three, it's something that they can just kind of mass produce. So the, uh, you know, those are kind of where it's at. The thing that 
the kind of the, the issue that I have with listing on Etsy is that one, they're limited listings. So let's say, you know, the listing lasts like four months, which is a good amount of time. Don't get me wrong. But let's say you list something on Etsy for those four months and the listing prices are not that bad. Uh, I think they're like 20 cents, 30 cents, something like that. Um, so it's, it's reasonable for the amount of time it's listed. It's way longer than like if you list it on eBay or something, right? So the time and the price is not an issue. It's just that it's temporary. So you have to continuously renew those listings over and over and over and over and over. Uh, so, you know, you're constantly having to upload, like continuously, uh, you know, pay for those listings every time it renews. So there's that, right? That you're continuously now again, twenty cents, thirty cents, whatever it is nowadays. It's not a lot, but you know, if you have ten listings, that's thirty bucks. Now, if you're selling artwork, that's great, but you know, thirty bucks for ten listings one time, um, but not selling anything, it kind of adds up. Especially if you renew it four times or three times a year, whatever it is, and it's a hundred bucks just to not sell anything. Now, that's kind of the gamble of selling online. However, uh, the other part of that is that it's temporary. So what I mean by that is that if you are posting uh, on Etsy, let's say that you list some items and those listings only last you know four months and then you forget to renew or you just don't renew well let's say that you have those listings and then you you drive a bunch of traffic to etsy like you you send visitors to etsy you know maybe through social media or ads or whatever you do right so you're sending people to etsy but then those listings expire or maybe they get taken down for whatever reason well, now you just send a bunch of traffic to a website that you don't have any control over. So, you know, one, you don't have control over the website, but two, those listings don't last very long. So if you, let's say you list on Etsy and then forgot about it later on, we well, sent a bunch of traffic to like a dead link, essentially. Um, so now Etsy is getting a bunch of free traffic. People aren't going to be able to see the stuff that you created. They're going to see stuff by other people because you did renew those listings. So, it's kind of pointless because those listings will eventually expire unless you continuously renew, renew, renew. So again, people who are uh, making a lot of money with that, uh, you know, they can, t they can, they can do that. Right. So if uh, one suggestion I have for you, if you plan on using Etsy, what's, what's really smart. Okay. Is to have one kind of one main item, that you can put a lot of different variations of or that you have almost an infinite number of on one listing. So to create one listing with a bunch of variations so that you can send all that traffic to just one uh, listing. And sorry, guys. Yes, I play uh, I play games online. So anyway, uh, so to have one listing that you just kind of send up a lot of that traffic to uh, instead of having a bunch of different listings that you're trying to send a bunch of traffic to over and over and over, if that makes sense. So that would be my suggestion if you do use Etsy, um, you know, trying to put a bunch of variations or having, you know, if you have a bunch of versions of one thing to use one listing for a bunch of versions so that you can just send all your traffic to one listing. Uh, it's a little easier that way. But anyway, Again, I don't use Etsy um, because I, I hate that the, the that your listings expire, and I also hate that um, you know that you have to pay for every single listing and it adds up over time. So you know, someone like me who has like let's say 50 artworks available for sale, you know, 50 times you know even a quarter or whatever, um, you know, it's going to add up to what is it, uh, sixty-five dollars, seventy-five dollars, something like that. Um, for one set of listings that's not to say you know for that uh, you know for all of that stuff so again I, I personally don't use it but you can um, you could definitely try it out it's not expensive to list a few things so you, you know I'd say if you've got a few bucks you could definitely give it a shot and see kind of how it goes um, I just personally don't use it so 
those are kind of the two main listing sites that I would um, throw out there to consider. Again, I use SuchR all the time because those listings are permanent. You know, as long as you're on the site, you have those listings. So I still have products on there from like three years ago. So what's nice about that is that uh, with SuchR, you know, if you're if you're posting an artwork, it stays there. So even if I link to it years ago and someone stumbles upon that link, that, that listing is still going to be there. Even if I sell the item, I can put sold on the listing so they can't buy it, but they can still see the item and then see my other work. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of why I use such art stuff. Okay, so let's talk about now um, building a site and having your own website. And we're going to talk about kind of getting traffic to the site in just a few minutes, but we're going to talk about building a site. So I'm going to, I'm going to go over a couple of free ones and then I'm going to go over uh, some paid ones. Okay. And so we're going to talk about really quick how to do that. Okay. So if you want to just build a free website, like you don't want to pay for a website or you're, you're not sure if you're going to pay for a website, you don't have the money right now, something like that, but you want to have a site because the thing is, is that if you have a website, it's easier to control the content and the pictures and the way it looks and all that, as opposed to just sending people to like a listing site like Satyar. With Satyar, you can't really control the site. You just upload the, the stuff and, you know, they either buy it or they don't. The problem with Satyar is that you're competing with all those other people on Satyar, just like you would Etsy. And so... You know, if you're sending people to a site like that, you don't control the content and people are being diverted to other people's uh, work as well. So it's, it's kind of a double-edged sword. But if you have your own website, when you send people to your website, obviously they're only going to see your work. So uh, my recommendation is to have your own website. But if you can't afford it or you just don't, you're too lazy to set one up right now, um, I totally get it. However, we're gonna let's talk about how you can set up a couple, you know, a website for free at least to get started. Uh, so there's two websites. The first one is WordPress.com, and then the second one is uh, Wix. And you've probably heard of Wix, and we'll kind of go over that in a few minutes. But uh, WordPress.com is basically a site where you can, um, you know, set up your own website for free and it would be on their domain uh, I'm gonna open this in Firefox here real quick okay so I'm gonna move this over I guess am I still signed in okay so I'm gonna sign out of that real quick okay so basically um, on wordpress.com you can set up a free website okay now it would be you know whatever you choose as part of the subdomain and then dot wordpress.com. So it'd be like, um, you know, if you, if you did like Jim's artwork, it'd be Jim's artwork dot wordpress.com. Um, and so you can set up a free website through like WordPress and essentially the site, um, you have limited control over it. So you can choose the way it looks and you can add, you know, your photos and content and stuff. And essentially it's a blog. Um, and then, you just upload your content and it would give you, you know, that free site and it's free to use. It's free to have. You can kind of choose uh, what websites or, you know, what it looks like and stuff like that. Uh, so you can do that, right? You can set up a free like blog and upload your content there, you know, your pictures and stuff like that. And it gives you limited control, right? So you can upload all that stuff. You can't really add like buy links or anything like that, but you could always just use the site and then uh, tell people this kind of the same thing that you could on Instagram, like, Hey, just, you know, message me for, uh, for pricing and stuff like that. So that would at least allow you to kind of funnel people to a site. Um, let me see if I still have, uh, that one. I used to have one, I think that's what it was. Oh, dot. Okay, yes. So yes, I used to write. Um, but anyway, so basically I used to have a site and then I would, you know, create these little short, um, you know, blog posts or whatever. And then because you can't put in sales links here, like on, on a site like this, a WordPress site, 
uh, what I would do is I would just put like picture links over here. Like this was to an Amazon listing. Um, and so like if you were on like Saatchi Art, say you were listed on Saatchi Art, you could just, you know, link to your stuff here in the sidebar or here in the post and stuff like that. Now I'm not going to go into how to set up a brand new website and all that. There's a lot of content out there, but um, essentially you could just, you know, put links to it or picture links or something like that on your site. And essentially that's how you would do it. You would just use this, you would write, you know, you could just upload the picture, put the caption, the name, all that stuff. And then, you know, just put links to it either in the sidebar or in the post itself. So that's how you can kind of do that um, with a free site like wordpress.com. So that's WordPress. Um, and then Wix kind of has the same thing where you can set up like a, a free uh, website. It was, it's on their domain, uh, but you can set up a free website and kind of get started with that. And then, you know, do the same thing. You just put up pictures of the artwork. And if you can't put a link for people to buy it through that site, you could always just tell them to message you somehow um, and then, you know, send them a PayPal link. Same thing. You know, so, so again, this is a, just an easy way to get a website going. If you don't want to pay for it or can't afford it, you can use Wix or WordPress uh, to set up a free site, at least to get you going. And then the advantage to that is that if you use Wix or WordPress, uh, like WordPress.com, you can always upgrade those later. So you can buy a domain through those companies and then uh, host it still continue to host it through those companies um, and use them for that. So like you can uh, always upgrade to, you know, your website.com and it would be your site instead of like, you know, your site.wix.com or your site.wordpress.com. So you can upgrade through those uh, platforms and then have your own website later, you know, if, if you start selling the artwork and it takes off and whatever. So, you know, that's, uh, that's how you can kind of get a, a website going right away. Uh, it would be on their domain, but it would give you a website, you know, that you could start using right away to, to promote. So again, it's up to you. All right. So then I'll just, now let's talk about kind of paid options for building a website. Okay. And this is, you know, there's, I'm really going to hit the three main ones because uh, these are kind of just the three biggest uh, website platforms. There's a lot of great ones out there. There's a lot of other ones. But again, just kind of going with the most popular ones that you've probably heard of. Okay, so again, with Wix, you can just right out the gate, you can buy um, plans and just have a website right away that you can use. Um, and... This would be, you know, your own website, like, you know, your website.com, whatever. And the thing with Wix is that it's a website builder. So it is easy to use because you can build your website out real fast. Um, but the issue with that is that it comes at a cost. So like, so let's say that you, you were just doing this one right here, right? You were doing this, uh, you were doing this combo one, whatever it is, um, and you chose this. Okay, well, it's great because you kind of get your website right away and you can start, you know, building it out. But 13 times, you know, whatever, uh, let's say, you know, 12 months or whatever is like $160 almost. So it's $160 a, a year just to have a website. Again, if you're not tech savvy, that might be of use to you because, uh, you know, it's got a lot of built in things to, to create that website real fast. So it is a website builder. Um, so it does make it easier and kind of quicker to start building a website using something like Wix. Um, and then Squarespace is kind of the same. And that's why I'm kind of lumping them together because they're, they're like the same thing. Like they're, they're different in the approach, but overall they kind of, do the same thing where uh, basically they you, you build up a website. It's a website builder, and you can pay for the upgraded plan to start using it right away. But the cost of that is more than if you built the website yourself, if that makes sense. So because it's a website builder, it's not like you're just buying the site. You're also buying kind of the builder itself to be able to build that website up uh, very easily. So 
essentially what my recommendation here is that if you are not comfortable with learning kind of back-end content management stuff, then maybe look into Squarespace or Wix and kind of see which one might be better for you because they're not bad services. I mean, 13 a month is really not that bad. Like even $17 a month um, really isn't, it's, it's not that insane. Like if you have 20 bucks to spend, you know, on coffee or, you know, some other bad habit or something, you know, 20 bucks a month really isn't that bad. And it gives you, you know, you can build a professional looking website and, the paid versions, if you own your site, you can actually integrate, you know, kind of like buy now links and stuff like that and just start selling through the website itself. You don't have to go through like an external thing like PayPal. So, you know, if you've got, you know, 20 bucks a month or whatever it is to buy a website, then going through Wix or Squarespace um, might actually be a decent option for you because it, it's easy to build those sites and uh you know you don't have to kind of build up the site from scratch as you would with you know wordpress.org which is going to be the other kind of spectrum the other end of the spectrum so that's squarespace and wix um you know if you like i said if you've got the money and you want to start building up a site then you know pick one of these however if you want to go like the cheaper option to have more control again you know more control usually means cheaper, but it also means more work, right? So the other way to kind of go about this is WordPress.org. So there's WordPress.org and then there's WordPress.com. And they're owned by the same company, but they're two different things. So WordPress.com, which is what, you know, this is, uh, essentially is, you know, where you would get a free website and it's hosted on their site, their domain. Um, but on wordpress.org this is just a blogging platform that you download the blog and install it on your own domain so there's a lot more to that and i'm not going to go through all the steps and everything essentially what i'm going to tell you is this like i use wordpress.org because it's a you can maximize kind of your site there's a lot of options there's a lot of flexibility but again I don't recommend it if you're just trying to get started right away or if you don't have the time to kind of learn how to build up your site with content and stuff like that. Um, essentially, again, WordPress.org is just a blogging platform. You, you know, you get hosting somewhere and then you install the blog and then you start customizing it from the inside out. Um, so the web hosting I'm going to recommend to you if you kind of go the WordPress route, which is the way that I go. Um, is Bluehost. So Bluehost is really, really good. Um, I had used them years ago and then switched away to another um, hosting company that I thought was going to be good. And it's not that great. And I'm not going to say who it is. I'm just going to say that the one I currently had used, um, you know, that wasn't Bluehost wasn't that great. Uh, HostGator is also pretty good. I think they're owned by the same company. I'm not 100 percent sure, but but Bluehost is really affordable. Like you can see that you can get you know a site um, for just three bucks a month. So three times twelve is thirty six, and you know you can get your free. You get you know you can get a domain with it. I think it's like five ten bucks or whatever it is. Um, but yeah, I mean you get a lot of stuff with it or even if you went you know this route of six dollars a month well six dollars a month is still cheaper than 20 so you know it's got a lot of that stuff bluehost also really supports wordpress so some you know you can install wordpress on pretty much any hosting company but some hosts are more uh user friendly with that kind of stuff so uh bluehost is is really kind of the way to go or hostgator um to getting kind of a blog off the ground. So using Word, if you're going to use WordPress, you know, that's kind of the way that I would go is, is getting Bluehost. And then once you're, you know, in it, I would just, you could watch some tutorials out there on how to start your own WordPress blog. It's not that difficult. It would take a few hours for you to kind of get it up and running. But again, it's, it's kind of the more affordable option and it teaches you how to manage that website. So essentially what I do is I, I have, a wordpress.org blog right on my website so it's codyschwabi.com this is a wordpress 
uh, website. And then I use a, um, some extensions called WooCommerce. So it's an extension that you install to the blog. Um, it's called WooCommerce and it gives you like a shopping cart basically so that you can, uh, you know, start having people buy your, you know, your work through your website. So that's what I use. Again, I use WordPress.org, you know, the blogging platform, and then I use WooCommerce to actually sell the artwork. So again, there's a lot of videos out there. There's a lot of uh, tutorials. If you guys want me to kind of go through that stuff, I can set up a brand, like a separate video on how to kind of, you know, build up the blog and stuff like that. Um, but there, there's a lot of content out there, so you could probably find what you need. If not, let me know, and maybe I'll do another video like this for setting up a site. Anyway, so now we've talked about all that. <laughs> this is Those were just the places to list your artwork. So you've got, you know, you can just tell people to um, message you, and then you can send them a PayPal link. You can list it on a gallery site like Saatchi Art or Etsy. You can set it up on a free website like WordPress.com or Wix.com, or you can use a paid site or, you know, a paid website builder like Wix or Squarespace. And lastly, or you can just set up your own, your own website through WordPress.org and you have complete control over that website. So those are the different places to list. Now that was just to list. Let's talk about, um, getting traffic to those places. Um, this is kind of like my, my favorite aspect of it is just kind of getting visitors to that stuff. Okay. Um, ultimately what I recommend is, um, I have a website and then I also use Saatchi Art. The reason for that is, is because I don't really promote the Saatchi Art uh, page. However, just having an extra place to sell the artwork um, is kind of nice. And I have, I've made sales through Saatchi Art. So uh, what I do is I list on my own website and then I list on Saatchi Art as well. But I, I don't really promote the Saatchi Art page. I just promote my website, if that makes sense. So that's kind of my route. Um, so that way I have two places where the stuff is listed, but all the traffic goes to my website where I can kind of control uh, where the traffic goes. So just, just as a heads up. All right. So now let's talk about uh, traffic and kind of how to do this. Now the very, very first um, and kind of most important to me uh, place is Instagram, but I'm going to come back to that because I feel like Instagram is probably the most, um, the most powerful, uh, but there's some really good, uh, ways to do this. And then we're going to, we're going to talk about that. Then I'm going to move this over here because that's kind of the last, so we're going to come back to that. Okay. So Instagram is probably the best, but we're, again, we'll come back. So the first one that I'll, I'll start talking about is YouTube. YouTube is huge, um, and if you are okay with uh, videotaping yourself, uh, making the artwork, YouTube is huge. I mean, it's so easy to get views, right? Because you can create your artworks and then upload that, and then you know have people watch those videos, and then in those videos you can link back to your own website or whatever. Um, one of my favorite. Like YouTubers is this guy, Siraj Fine Arts. He, obviously, you can see he has a decent amount of, you know, 2.4 million subscribers and he has almost 1,000 videos. His videos get, you know, you know 10,000 views, 400,000 views, 15 million views. So just ridiculous amounts of views. This is all people who could be buying your artwork. And the thing with it is though is that you know some people just come to be entertained so they're not going to buy anything however if you have 15 million people seeing your video and you have a link to your website it's 15 million possibilities of a sale right so it's not necessarily that you're going to get that many views or anything like that but you know it's a free way to advertise and that is you know just you always want you know as many avenues as you can however if you're not comfortable videotaping like yourself making the artwork or you know creating little videos about it or you know just kind of stuff like that then youtube is not going to work for you so i'm not going to suggest it again i like youtube i use it personally because i film myself creating the artwork and then i just post those videos so 
I can use it as content and as links to the site, you know, so that if people are interested, those links are in the description. Um, so for me, I've gotten some traffic that way. It's a great way if you, again, if you like doing video, but I know a lot of artists who aren't comfortable recording themselves, so they don't do that. Um, so it really kind of comes down to your comfort level. If you, if you like, you know, videotaping it, recording it and putting that out there, uh, you can put it on that. Um, you can also put those videos on Instagram, you know, if they're like a minute or less. So it's another thing to consider, uh, for videos. So video is one way, right? Uh, the next is just good old Facebook. Um, now you can just post it on your personal page or if you have a Facebook fan page, you know, you can post this on your Facebook fan page. Uh, really how you do that is up to you. I use a Facebook fan page just because it's easier to separate. The problem with the Facebook fan page is that um, Facebook really loves money. So they will only show your post to a limited number of people. So you could have a thousand fans and only... 10 to 20 percent of those fans even see uh, the post because Google or not Google sorry Facebook always wants you to promote it you know that's why there's always boost post or you know you'll see that like every one of them has boost post boost post boost post because they want you to spend money to to boost this to the rest of your audience so it's kind of annoying but it is what it is um, but yeah, posting to Facebook is totally an easy thing to do. You know, you can share the links of your website. You could share the links of your pictures, whatever it is. You know, just share it to a Facebook fan page or your Facebook, you know, actual Facebook account, whatever you want to do. Um, you know, it's just an easy way to get people to see it. I don't spend a whole lot of time on Facebook, um, but I do use it. So I'm going to talk about how I kind of use that in just a second. Um, so the next thing uh, is blogging. So if you don't, you know, if you do set up a website like on WordPress, essentially the whole point of the WordPress site is that it's a blog and a blog is just basically like an online journal or an online article database, right? That you would create, um, yourself for other people to read. Well, some people make a full-time income with blogging and they just share their thoughts and ideas or they just share, you know, tutorials and stuff like that in text. And uh, one of my favorite artists is his name. He goes by the handle Suarez. Uh, his name is Ed. He's out of the UK and he, he does, a, you know, he has a blog. So he'll occasionally put up articles um, about, you know, just different things about people uh, you know, art itself and uh, his ideas on art and how to create art and stuff like that. Just a lot of different uh, things. And so he'll, he'll blog occasionally. And, uh, you know, those, that blog is content for people to read. And not only is it content for people to read, but one, you know, Google scans most blogs. So it can put those listings into Google. Um, the other thing is that you know, if people like that article, they can share it with other people on social media. So, you know, it's just another way to get traffic if you like to write. So if you like writing um, articles about, you know, your topic, whatever it is, pho photography or, you know, making sculptures, whatever it is, you know, you could share ideas about the process. Um, you could put just your ideas about, you know, that thing, like if it, if it is, you know, art, you know, you could just share your ideas and opinions uh, and stuff like that into the blog. And then you can start, you know, sharing that blog on social media like Facebook and stuff like that. So, again, it's another way to do it if you like to write. So all of these kind of things are, are just kind of different aspects of sharing, you know, your content. So blogging is, a, you know, if you love writing, blogging is a way to get traffic because you're, putting out a written word of what you like to talk about. Video is the same thing. If you enjoy video, if you like creating videos or narrating things or talking about a specific subject, then video is the way to go. Um, if you like just doing short posts where you just like sharing stuff, but you don't like writing a whole lot or, or you don't like doing videos, that's what Facebook is for. You know, each one kind of has its own component based on your what you like to do or what you would most likely do 
um, online. So you, you just have to kind of think about what social media platform is really um, the most ideal to you as a person. Okay, so lastly is Instagram. And uh, we're going to talk about that and just uh, we're going to talk about some other. Oh, there's there's two, but uh, the main one is Instagram. So Instagram to me is kind of the most important social media out of all of them, especially for artists. So I've heard that the reach on Instagram is dying. That may be true, but people still use it. Millions and millions of people still use uh, Instagram. And not only that, but Instagram is great for art because it's art is visual. And so it's so easy to share a visual thing visually with other people, if that makes sense. So like I'm creating art for people to see, right? So it's so easy to share the pictures of art with other people because of that, right? And so um, Instagram to me is kind of the most important one for artists because I feel like it, it's just the easiest way to share pictures um, with people. If you're creating art, art is visual. So using a platform that supports visual stuff just makes sense, right? So for me, Instagram is probably the, the number one way to uh, share artwork. If you don't use any other platform, it would make sense to use Instagram alone because there are some people who use Instagram as their primary platform and really nothing else. There's people who just like almost never post on Facebook. They don't create videos um, or they don't do articles like blogs and stuff like that. They only do Instagram and they make it. They make it like they full time make it. Um, and I wanted to show you a couple of examples. So like that guy, Siraj, I was telling you about, he's, he's more about uh, the YouTube side, right? He's a YouTuber. Like I said, he's got a lot of followers. So his whole thing is that he promotes his YouTube channel here, uh, in the link link box. However, this guy does the same thing that I was telling you about earlier where, you know, he promotes his, um, he promotes his artwork and says that it's for sale. And so people can, you know, message him, um, for his artwork because he does the same thing where he tells people they can, you know, message him to, to buy it. Um, but this guy, you know, he does this where he does the videos and he'll do videos here on, on his Instagram page. Um, but he's promoting, you know, his artwork because he, even though his main thing is YouTube, he still has 89,000 followers on Instagram. So, Again, it just makes sense because you're promoting art, which is what people are seeing right here in their feed. And so this one, you know, he has the actual price with uh, the size and everything. So again, it's a visual thing. You're promoting a visual thing to people on a visual platform. So it just makes sense. Uh, here's another example of a lady, uh, Jessica Swan. She just started this website. So before she had a website, uh, she actually just used to promote the artwork and she would tell people to, you know, message her for availability. So again, another person who was kind of doing that. Um, now she has a website and you can see that she has 200,000 followers, 200,000. So it's quite a few um, to be able to promote a product and, you know, have someone possibly buy it. I mean, it's 200,000 chances if everybody sees it. Let's say only 10% of people see that. This is still 20,000 people um, that you could possibly sell an artwork to. So, again, you know, she doesn't do YouTube. She doesn't, you know, I don't know that if she, that she does blogging or anything else. She just does this. And so, you know, she just hammers at home. Same thing with this guy, Luca Brandy. He actually... <laughs> Again, same story. He didn't used to have a website. Uh, he actually is a Sachi art person. And that's kind of, I think that's how I actually found out about Sachi art. It's because I was following this guy and found out that he was listed there. Um, but now he has a website. So, you know, he promotes the website on, on Instagram. But it's, again, the same thing. Um, I never, this guy doesn't make videos. He doesn't do blogs. I don't see him posting on Facebook. It's just here. It's just Instagram. Because, again, it's a visual thing on a visual platform. So he's promoting uh, you know, he does his Instagram posts and he just, uh, he tells people that they can message him for the stuff, but he also lists it on his website. So again, 
just makes sense, right? And uh, he's got, you know, 41,000. It's respectable. Uh, I love this lady, Carla Safe, I think is how you say it, or Say Fernandez. Um, anyway, she is a top selling artist on Such Art and Art Finder. Um, her work is just very, uh, it's very cut and dry, right? It's kind of lines. Um, but yeah, like this is an example where she was on the, the homepage of Such Art. But anyway, this lady, uh, she has her own website and she also tells people like the price um, and the size and everything. So, you know, she promotes it on here and same thing. She doesn't do videos. Uh, she doesn't do all these other things. She just posts on Instagram. So uh, lastly is Suarez. This is the guy that I showed you that actually does blog and he does video. He, this guy's all over the place. I love this guy. He's, he's one of my favorite artists because he's just so kind of down to earth. But he also does, he also uses gloss enamel, which is mostly the type of paint that I use. So he's, he's always been kind of a mentor to me, even though uh, he doesn't know that. So anyway, this guy, you know, he doesn't have a lot of followers, but he sells art. Um, believe me, he sells art. Um, and this is kind of a picture of his gallery with, you know, just a bunch of the paintings that he has. The guy is a phenomenal artist, makes some really cool paintings. So, uh, and he's everywhere. So, you know, he's kind of, he kind of takes the shotgun approach. He's got, you know, a YouTube channel that's growing. Uh, he's on Instagram. He's on, uh, he posts on Facebook. So he, he kind of takes the shotgun approach. Um, I'm not necessarily recommending that for you. Um, but again, he's on He's also on Instagram, so he is on here um, and posts some really cool pictures. So I'm going to come back and kind of wrap this up here, but I want to give you this idea that how you promote depends on what you're comfortable with and how much time you have and the way you kind of want to approach this. Um, I would say that if you were going to do anything, start with Instagram and really just hammer it home because Instagram, again, is a visual platform for visual things, so it just makes sense for artwork. Um, it's also, you know, it's free to get started. It's free to just kind of post really as much as you want. And there are people who are using solely Instagram and making it as artists. Um, now, one thing that I run into, or, or I don't run into it, but I've seen people have issues with, it's like, how do I promote my art? Like, what do I post? Uh, it's really easy. You just post pictures of, you know, the finished product, close-ups, um, staged, you know, if you do paintings, what's an easy thing that you can do is to, you know, create the picture and then put it on a site like this. This is a, you could just search like a canvas print simulator or something like that, or put image on a wall. And this thing, you can actually put your, your picture into this thing and it would actually show you what it would look like on a wall. So then you could just download that picture and put it on Instagram so that it looks staged. So let me give an example. Let's see if I have one here. Yeah, like this. Okay. So like this um, is on a site like that where you just upload your image and then it'll show you what it looks like in a house. And you just download that image and then you upload the image so that you now have an image of the artwork, of a close up and of the you know what it looks staged so people kind of get an idea of what it looks like you know if it was in their house um, and i have this uh you know just kind of like a little blurb here that it what it is the size and that it is available and then they can email you know message me or email uh to learn more or visit my site so um you know that's how you can do that so that's essentially what i would recommend how you promote is based on you know, what your comfort level is as a person and what you, how you like to promote. So if you, you know, if you like doing written word, do a blog. If you like just sharing, uh, do Facebook. If you want to create video content, use YouTube. But ultimately, I would recommend, if nothing else, Instagram. Now, on top of Instagram is the last one that I kind of want to recommend, and that's Pinterest. So Pinterest is huge. I mean, huge. Um, so what I would recommend you do is create a Pinterest account. You can do a business one or you can do just a personal, whatever you want to do and start, you know, promoting your stuff through whatever means you want. doesn't really matter what kind it is. 
Um, I would say, let's say it was uh, Instagram, right? And then just start posting those Instagram, um, basically posting those Instagram pages um, to Pinterest. So taking your individual video or the photos and then posting them to um, Pinterest because Pinterest is going to get you traffic on top of the Instagram post itself, if that makes sense. So essentially what I do is like, let's say I was going to promote, you know, this right here, you click on it and it's going to give you kind of the close up and it's going to give you the address here, right? So you can see the, the address here. Well, Pinterest has a Pinterest, uh, extension that you can get for like Chrome and I think Firefox, I'm not 100% sure, but Chrome for at least. And you can actually save images or pages. So let's say that I wanted to promote um, my own picture on Pinterest. So I've got all of my you know, pictures here. But let's say that I went to Pinterest and I clicked on this image or this video. And then I wanted to save it. So then I click this little Pinterest extension. And then I can save it to all of my own boards. And I have my own, you know, about my own stuff, click save, and then it's done. So now it's uh, on Pinterest, and I should see it here. And there it is. So Pinterest is, like I said, Pinterest is huge, has millions and millions of, you know, viewers, followers. And not only that, it just gives you another way to be found. Um and so what I would recommend is if you did nothing else, nothing else at all as an artist to kind of get traffic and to get seen, um, start an Instagram account, start posting pictures of your work, you know, and don't overthink it. Just, you know, you could do close ups, you can do far aways, you can do, uh, you know, models inside someone's house, whatever you got to do. It just depends on your, your work. Um, but just post the photos, right? And then start posting those photos to Pinterest so that, you know, you can get seen on top of being seen uh, on Instagram. And I won't go into hashtags too much. Um, I would just find somebody that you like um, or that's doing well on Instagram and just copy their hashtags. Like just don't, again, don't overthink it. Just you know, copy and paste and start there. <laughs> um, now I want to give you my last tip and I've talked about this in another video. Um, and this is a service called if this, then that, and I'm not going to go into it a whole lot because I kind of explained it in that other video. Um, but essentially what if this, if this, then that is, or I F T T T, um, what it is, is it's basically a service for free, at least for now. Um, where you can post to one piece, you can post one piece of content to one social media, and then IFTTT will post it to other pieces of social media for you. Okay, so for example, you can kind of see some of the applets that I have. Um, I can when I post an Instagram photo, it goes to Tumblr, which Tumblr really isn't anything anymore, but it is what it is. Um, or when I, you know, when I post a picture to Instagram it automatically goes to Pinterest, you know, so I don't have to sit there and manually pin my own photos. Whenever I upload one using a specific hashtag, it automatically goes to Pinterest. So, you know, as long as I use that hashtag in the photo, then it goes to Pinterest automatically. So I don't have to sit there and do that. And then you can do this with, you know, YouTube to Pinterest or Twitter. Uh, that was the other thing is, you can use Twitter if you want. Again, I have Twitter and I use it, but only through this. I don't sit there and use Twitter myself, so I don't, I don't really use Twitter. Um, some people do, some people don't. I I have it and I only use it through this. I don't sit there and actually post manually, so I'm not going to waste my time doing that. Um, but that's pretty much it. So if you were going to do anything, let's say you were just starting out right now. I would, and, and you had no money, you wanted to start getting your artwork out there. Um, my plan for you is this. What you would do is you create an Instagram. You, If you set up a website, you would put that here. If you don't set up a website, or maybe you just do Sachi Art, you can put your Sachi Art link here in your description. 
next you start creating p pictures of your artwork you know just start taking photos like crazy you know and you want them to look good you might have to you know use gimp or photoshop or something to to make them look good but if not just start posting the photos of your art right so then once you have those photos um or before you even do that go ahead and create a pinterest account um you could just do a personal you can do a business whatever you want and then Go to IFTTT and search something like this where you automatically pin Instagrams to, um, you know, Pinterest from Instagram with a hashtag and then just set that up so that it's in there. Again, there's videos on how to do this. I've talked about it in another video. Just, you know, just look it up. It's super easy. Um, but then start posting to Instagram with that hashtag. So like for me, the hashtag, and I think I didn't use it here, and that's why I didn't post. Um, I think I did use it here. So my hashtag is just my name. So anytime I use my name, it'll pin it automatically to Pinterest. That's why this one was here and this one wasn't, because the other one, I didn't put that hashtag. So uh, essentially, um, I would set that up first. I'd set up the Instagram and the Pinterest accounts, and then before you start actually posting, go into IFTTT, set, set this up so that it automatically pins your Instagram um, to Pinterest. And then if you want to do Facebook, um, Instagram actually allows you to paste, like post directly to Facebook. And I think Twitter actually within the Instagram app, you'd have to check. Um, so you could just use that to post to Facebook and Twitter and Twitter at the same time. So you're not sitting there manually doing it. And then that's it. That, that's all I would do over and over and over and over and over and over. Um, and that's it. You don't have to make it complicated. You don't have to overthink it. You don't have to invest a ton of money, any money at all, if you don't want to. And that is a complete marketing plan, essentially, on how you can promote your artwork. You simply just go and create an Instagram and a Pinterest uh, Facebook and Twitter if you want. You go and you set up IFTTT so that it posts for you. When you post on Instagram, you just link up your other social medias through that, uh, through Facebook or through IFTTT through your Instagram. Um, and then you just post to Instagram so that it goes to Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest without you even having to do anything. And that's it. And you just continuously post and post and post and post and post. And, post. and that's it. That, that's literally all you have to do. And then in your link for Instagram, um, you know, you would just link to your free site or your Sachi art page or, um, you know, your website if you set one up. And then that's it. Like, I think a lot of people just overthink it or they think that they have to do all these crazy complicated things. Um, but you really don't. And it's as easy as just like picking one path essentially, and just following that path until it works. And I think a lot of time we just kind of get confused or we get overwhelmed and, you know, we think that we have to do all these things. But the problem is, is that if you kind of just try to do everything, you won't do anything very well. Like, for example, that guy Suarez that I was talking about, the guy sells art, right? And he he's growing his YouTube channel. That's why this YouTube link is here. Um, but his followers are not very, like, he doesn't have a lot of followers, right? So on Instagram, he doesn't have a lot of followers. He has, like, 4,000. And then on YouTube, he has, like, 16,000 followers or subscribers or whatever, you know, whatever that is. So let me see. Yeah, 16,000. So those numbers are respectable, right? They're, they're good numbers. But the problem is, is that, you know, traffic-wise, he's not just kind of following one thing. He's trying to do a bunch of different things. Whereas uh, this guy, who is Siraj, he focuses on the YouTube. And it's, you know, it's huge. It's 2.4 million subs. Um, and then it's still a respectable amount of followers. But, you know, his thing is YouTube. So it's like, you have to just kind of carve out your niche of whatever it is that you like to do and really just hammer it home. Um, and that's it. I mean, that's it, guys. I mean, if you want to make it or if you want to be successful with this, you just, that's all you have to do. You just set up your your site if you want one. Uh, you go on Instagram, start posting pictures over and over and over again uh, using hashtags that, you know, successful people are using and a specific hashtag that you can use for IFTTT. And that's it. 
that's literally it. Have IFTTT and Instagram kind of post to those other sites for you. And that's it. Like, that's all you have to do. So, I know this video was kind of long. I know that there was kind of a lot of information, but hopefully that simplified kind of thing at the end really helps um, because that's all you have to do. It, and I'm, again, I'm not guaranteeing you're going to get success or see success. I'm not guaranteeing that you're going to make sales. But following one path uh, over and over and over again is much better than doing nothing at all or trying to go down a bunch of different paths at once. Um, but anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully this made a lot of sense. Hopefully this helps and uh, will help you you know, hopefully start getting that, that, uh, your art out there and start, you know, helping you to make sales. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know, you know, like, and subscribe, all that cool stuff and, uh, you know, more painting videos in the future. But uh, again, guys, really appreciate everything and hope for the best for you. So take care. God bless. See you guys in the next video. Bye guys.